Hello. Today I will share when will a runner experience severe dehydration using physics principles and concepts to explain what happened during a race and what are the precautions to take note and what are the calculations involved to determine if a runner will experience severe dehydration. Here are the mechanism for evaporation of water. Water is evaporated from our body to regulate our body temperature. So there are two mechanisms. Number one, the loss of water from our skin. Number two, water can also be lost from breathing where water is vaporized in the lungs and exhaled out. At what body temperature will the runner suffer from serious damage to the body? The average body temperature is around 37 degrees Celsius. So when the body temperature reaches 40 degrees Celsius, it will cause overheating of our body that will cause serious damage. Water is evaporated from the skin or through breathing to help reduce the rise in body temperature. Because when water evaporates, it removes the excess heat from our body to prevent overheating. Evaporation from skin alone is not sufficient to prevent overheating during a long race or a long run. Why evaporation from skin is not enough to prevent overheating? Let's assume that the runner has a mass of 70 kilograms in a one hour race. The average production of thermal energy of a human body is around 3.2 times 10 to the power of 6 joules. And the average loss of energy by evaporation from our skin is around 2.3 times 10 to the power of 6 joules. We are going to use the equation involving specific heat capacity to calculate the temperature rise during the one hour race. The average specific heat capacity of our body is around 3,500 joules per kg per degree Celsius. Now, the energy gained by the body is the difference between the average production of thermal energy and the average loss of energy by evaporation from the skin. So we take 3.2 times 10 to the power of 6 minus 2.3 times 10 to the power of 6 to obtain 0 0.9 times 10 to the power of 6 joules. So this is the energy gained by the body after minus the loss of energy by evaporation from the skin. Since energy gained by the body is equivalent to the equation mass times specific heat capacity times temperature rise, M times C, which represents specific heat capacity times the temperature rise, or we call that delta T. So given the energy gain by body is 0 0.9 times 10 power 6, and the mass of the runner at 70 kilogram, and the specific heat capacity as 3,500, the increase in temperature can be calculated as 0 0.9 times 10 to the power of 6 divided by 70 and 3,500 to get around 3.67 degrees Celsius. This exceeds 3 degrees Celsius. Remember, our average body temperature is around 37 degrees Celsius. So an increase of 3.67 degrees Celsius will be above the 40 degrees Celsius. If the body temperature exceeds 40 degrees Celsius, there is a high chance of serious damage to the body. Just like when we have a fever that exceeds 40 degrees Celsius, we cannot let it prolong because it will cause serious damage to our body. Now, we will talk about the level of dehydration. The level of dehydration of the human body is measured by the percentage loss by body mass caused by evaporation. 
So when we have less than 3% loss, it is considered as mild dehydration. If it's between 3 to 5%, it is moderate dehydration. Severe dehydration will be beyond 5%. So the percentage is calculated as the mass of water loss divided by the body mass of the person. So we will show an example in the next slide how this can be computed. Now, why the runner should drink more water or drink water during the race? So is it sufficient to sustain during a marathon race by not drinking water? Let's calculate to see if the runner can survive. Okay, there is a high chance that the runner will experience severe dehydration and endanger his or her life. Real life example, given the same runner in the previous example runs a 3.5 hour marathon race because we know a marathon will last beyond one hour. So an average time taken is around 3.5. The amount of thermal energy produced is lost through vaporization by exhalation and evaporation from skin. So the body produces energy because the mitochondria in our cells release energy through respiration. So this energy produced is lost through two main processes, vaporization by exhalation, as well as evaporation from the skin. In a 3.5 hour race, the amount of thermal energy lost through vaporization by exhalation is calculated by the previous data given, 3.2 times 10 power 6 minus 2.3 times 10 power 6 times 3.5 because it's a 3.5 hour race. So 3.2 times 10 power 6 is the average amount of thermal energy produced. 2.3 times 10 power 6 is the average amount of energy lost through evaporation from skin. So the difference will be the amount of energy lost through vaporization. Okay, so we want to calculate that amount of energy. Given latent heat of vaporization of water is 2.4 times 10 to the power of 5 joules per kilogram, we can calculate the mass of water loss during exhalation, which is the amount of thermal energy lost through uh, vaporization by exhalation divided by the latent heat of vaporization. Because mass times latent heat of vaporization will give us the energy lost through vaporization, which gives us 1.31 kilogram water. Now, that is for water lost through exhalation. For water lost by evaporation from the skin in 3.5 hours it is calculated as 3.5 times 2.3 times 10 power 6, which is the amount of energy lost through evaporation from the skin divided by the latent heat of vaporization, because that will give us the mass of water lost by evaporation. That will be 3.35 kilogram. We add these two mass together to find out the total mass of water loss. Okay, the objective of this exercise is to calculate how much water was lost through evaporation from the skin and evaporation through exhalation. So the total mass is around 4.66 kilogram. Now, remember in the previous slide, we show how severe dehydration or mild dehydration can be classified based on the percentage mass of water loss divided by the body mass. So we take 4.66 kilogram divided by the runner mass, which is around 70 kilogram times 100%. So this is calculated as 6.66%, which is of a severe dehydration, very dangerous for the runner. 6.66 is considered very high. So the longer the race, the more water loss without replenishment of water, the higher chance of getting severe dehydration. All right. If the temperature is higher, causing more loss of water, 
then it will be very dangerous for the runner. That's why during the recent Olympic game in Tokyo, the temperature is very high. So the runners need to drink a lot of water in order to prevent dehydration. Okay, now, so the data given, such as the amount of thermal energy loss, latent heat of vaporization, and amount of energy uh, loss through uh, evaporation from skin are average actual data. Okay, so if the mass of the runner is even lower than 70, then the risk is even higher. Okay, based on the formula given. Now, what are some of the advices before we end this session? Number one, drink more water to stay hydrated. And try to drink more water even during the race to prevent dehydration. At higher temperature, the run you take note, there will be more loss of water, so drink more water. Drink water during a long race, as advised earlier on. It is healthy to sweat to regulate body temperature but excessive water loss causes dehydration. There are some people who don't sweat a lot. That is actually dangerous because when water evaporates, it regulates body temperature. So the temperature rise of the body will not be too high. So if there is not enough sweating, the runner may suffer from overheating, which is very dangerous. So if there is too much water loss, there's dehydration. If there's not enough water loss, there could be less regulation of body temperature to maintain at body temperature, then the runner could suffer from uh, overheating. Okay, so please remember, drink more water. Okay, that's it for my presentation. I hope you learned something from here. Okay.